In this video, we will be analyzing the graph of a function to sketch the curve. If you've not already done so, press pause to copy these guidelines down in your notes. When you're ready to continue, press play. Our first step when we're analyzing the function is to find the x-intercepts. We do this by letting y equal 0. We know that f of x is the same as y, so we're going to let f of x equals 0, and we have 0 equals negative 2 times the quantity x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. Now if we multiply both sides by x squared minus 4, we get just the numerator equal to 0. And we can see that the only way that this would equal 0 is if this term was negative 1. And it won't be negative 1 because it's squared, and anything that's squared is always positive. So that means there are no x intercepts. Alright, our next step would be to find the y-intercept by letting x equal 0. Negative 2 times the quantity 0 squared plus 1 divided by 0 squared minus 4. So this tells me that y is equal to negative 2 times 1 divided by negative 4. Or y is equal to 1 half. So our y-intercept is at 1 half. Our next step is to find the vertical asymptotes where the denominator is equal to 0. So x squared minus 4 is our denominator. If we set that equal to 0, we get x squared is equal to 4, so x equals plus or minus 2. Those are our vertical asymptotes. So negative 2 and positive 2. Our next step is to find the horizontal asymptote, oblique asymptote, or the limit at positive infinity and or negative infinity. Well, this is a rational function, so we can determine that since the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, that we have a horizontal asymptote at the ratio of the lead coefficients. So my lead coefficient in the numerator is negative 2. My lead coefficient in the denominator is 1. So my horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 2 over 1, or negative 2. My next step is to, if we have a horizontal asymptote or oblique, we have to decide if the graph crosses that asymptote 
by setting our function equal to the equation of the asymptote and solving for x. So we want to answer the question, does graph cross horizontal asymptote? And we're going to set our function equal to, so our function is negative 2 times the quantity x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. We have to set our function equal to our uh, horizontal asymptote, which is negative 2. And then solve for x. So multiply both sides by x squared minus 4. This will cancel. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute my negative 2 through this binomial. So negative 2 times x squared and negative 2 times 1. And then on the right side, let's distribute this negative 2 through the binomial, negative 2 times x squared, and negative 2 times negative 4, positive 8. We can see that our x squared terms are going to cancel off if we add 2x squared to both sides. And so we end up with negative 2 is equal to 8. Well, this is not true. Therefore, the graph does not cross. The horizontal asymptote. If it did cross, we would get a value for x that would tell us where it crossed. Our next step is to find symmetry. Since our x's are squared, we can see that this is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Remember that to determine symmetry with respect to the y-axis, you put a negative x in in place of x. And if you come out with the same equation, then you have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Right. And then uh, find x values for which the first derivative is equal to 0 or the second derivative is equal to 0 or does not exist. And then use these to determine extrema, concavity, and points of inflection. So let's do our first derivative. Let me copy my function here. We have f of x is equal to negative 2 times the quantity x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus 4. So my first derivative will be x squared minus 4 times negative 4x subtract
negative 2x squared minus 2. I just distributed my negative 2 through the binomial times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x. And that's over the denominator squared. Now, for this to be equal to 0, we'd multiply both sides by this uh, denominator, and we'd have this top equal to 0. So let me distribute. This will be negative 4x cubed. and a positive 16x and we have negative and negative so we have a positive 4x cubed and then another negative negative and then 4x equal to 0. Let's cancel. And I have 16x plus 4x is 20x. So x is equal to 0 is one of our critical numbers. We also have to consider when the, the first derivative is undefined, or does not exist, rather. And that's going to happen at um, x equal plus or minus 2. So we need to look at I'm going to choose test values negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. And if we put these values, these test values, into our derivative Our derivative was 20x over x squared minus 4, quantity squared. So if I put negative 3 in here, for sure the bottom is going to be a positive because it's squared. So when I put negative 3 up in the numerator, I have a negative. So my first derivative is negative in this interval. And then if I put a negative 1 in, my first derivative is still negative in this interval. If I put a positive 1 in, I have a positive. And if I put 3, I have positive still. So remember that our first derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So we have a negative slope um, for these two intervals. But then we have a positive slope for these. And so whenever we uh, change from a negative first derivative to a positive first derivative, that means we have a relative min. So we have a relative minimum at x equals 0. And so to find the y value, we need to put that back into our function and I rewrote it right here. So when x was 0, we had negative 2 over 
negative 4, which was 1 half. So we have uh, this point that we graphed right here is going to be a relative min. Let's go ahead and do our second derivative. We said our first derivative was 20x over x squared minus 4 quantity squared. So our second derivative will be inside which is 2x. And then that's going to be over the denominator squared. So I'll have x squared minus 4 to the fourth power. Now I can do some simplifying. I can see this x squared minus 4 factor. I can see it here. So I can separate this into two fractions. I'll take one of these out. And so it'll just be x squared to the first power. So if I simplify this, this is 20x squared and negative um, 80x squared. That gives me a negative 60x squared. And then I have negative 80. And that's over x squared minus 4 to the third power. I need to set that equal to 0. Now usually at a point where you change concavity from concave down to concave up, you would consider that point to be a point of inflection. However, we know that we have these two uh, values are the um, vertical asymptotes. So all we can tell from our second derivative is our concavity. And we have no points of inflection. All right, so we can start sketching. We know that we have no x-intercepts. So we are not going to cross the x-axis. This is our x-axis. We know that we have um, a y-intercept at 1 half. And we also know that that is um, a relative min. We got that from our first derivative down here. So that means that um, we're going to have to go up along the asymptotes here. Not only because it's a relative min, but we can't go down because we can't cross the x-axis. We also know that we have our curve is concave down on the left side of our vertical asymptote and on the right side of our vertical asymptote, which means that our graph is going to look like this.